my wonderful teachers in this most amazing experience. I cannot thank you all enough for what this has done for, for my summer, for my 2020, for my life. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So this is still July, so hopefully I'll be better at this by September, but I wanted to make this recording when my wonderful daughter Adair is here <laughs> um, visiting, which is rare and wonderful. So we're just gonna give it a go. We're gonna treat this like a regular class with Adair coming in as a new student. Hi Adair, Hi. welcome to yoga. Have you done yoga before? Only a very little bit. Okay, and do you have any injuries, any past surgeries? Um, yeah, I had my collarbone repaired, so I have a metal plate and some screws in here, but it doesn't usually give me any problems. Okay, if, if it does, or if anything seems like it's even a little bit twitchy there, uh, just sit it out. One of the wonderful things about yoga is that the relaxation between the poses is as valuable as the poses themselves. So you can always rest in savasana, okay. which is corpse pose or sponge pose, and just let yourself completely relax. You can also always come into child's pose. Are you familiar with this? Uh -huh. Okay, so your hands can be forward, your hands can be back. So anytime that anything isn't working for you, you're always the boss, your body is always the boss. And if you have any questions about anything about the collarbone and you want to ask your surgeon or something uh, when that's appropriate, uh, feel free because it's always about you taking care of you and helping you be your very best self every day. Thank you for being part of this. Yeah, of course. And welcome everybody, whole class, uh, long comers. We won't say old timers, we'll say long comers, uh, as well as our new person, Adair. So let's start yogically. Let's close our eyes and come into ourselves. In yogic teachings, we know that here at our heart center is the seat of who we truly are. In yoga, it's called Atma. That's our divine self. I think of it sometimes, if you think of God or the great beneficence as the sun, then each of us has a beam, and that beam rests right here in this heart. And yoga goes on to say that not only do we have our little individual beam, our atma, but actually that the great divine, the paramatma, is in us as well, a little spark of magnificence. And what's also exciting is it's not just in us, it's in every single other person, every being, animal, plant, and probably every atom, which makes life pretty magical and miraculous. So sitting tall, comfortably, but with your spine straight, your head right over your cervical vertebrae, we're gonna begin by inhaling nice and deeply through the nose, exhale, Get a beautiful rhythm going there. And then we're gonna do what we call in yoga the ujjayi breath. And that means you're going to feel that you're shutting off your throat a little bit so that you can make this Darth Vader sound with your breath. So it's gonna sound something like this. So give that a little try and see if you can come up with that sort of um, seashell sound, the seashell to the ear sound, ujjayi breath. And we're gonna do that at our own pace for five lovely breaths. Continue your breathing and I'm going to talk a little bit. If you can envision that you're going to bring out your abdomen first and then your diaphragm and then your chest 
and then exhale. And final breath, abdomen, diaphragm, chest, and exhale. Now there's obviously no lungs in your abdomen, but just pressing out that abdomen helps you to inflate the lungs and give yourself all the oxygen and all the prana, that wonderful life force you've sometimes heard called chi. That's what they call it in China, in the martial arts and in acupuncture. Now let's just warm the body up. We're gonna begin just by bringing the chin down to the chest, slowly, slowly, and then come up and look up, and back to center, and look around to your left, and slowly, slowly around to your right, back to center. Bring your right hand up alongside your left ear and just bring that head to the right. Little gentle stretch on the neck and back to center, other side. And back to center. Now with your hands on your knees, let's just circle and get warmed up as if it were morning. And opposite direction. And both hands, fingertips on the floor beside you. Right arm up in line with your ear. And bend over to your left with the shoulder down. Nice stretch in that side of the waist. And now let's just do a little autocorrect and try to face the chest toward the wall in front of you. And hold, and back up, palms on the mat, and bend over. It's beautiful, beautiful hands. You must have done ballet. Reach and stretch and then auto-correct just so that your chest is toward that wall. And up. Now we're gonna do a little mini twist as part of our warm up. We'll do a bigger twist later. Right arm on the left knee, left hand behind you, and that may be left fingertips. It just depends on how long your arms are. And whenever we do a twist, we like to twist first from the bottom part of the spine, then the center, then the top, and only at the end, the head comes around looking over that left shoulder. And back to center, left arm, hand on right knee, and twist, starting at the bottom of your spine, center, top, look around. In yoga, they say you are as young as your spine. So we do lots of spinal movements. And back forward. And now be sure that you're in your cross-legged seat, one leg is uh, in front of you, pretty flat. You have a wonderful uh, hip opening there. Sometimes we tell people if anybody needs it to place a blanket or a little uh, block under a, a knee that's upright, but you're, you are nice <laughs> with the knees near the floor. So hands on the knees. We're just going to fold forward. You can start with a flat back. And what we're looking for is a stretch in the back of the hip that correlates to the leg that's in front. And you can just be here. You can bring your hands down in front of you and rest your head on them. Or if you do want to use a yoga block, obviously you don't need one. I'm going to use one. Rest the head and just feel that lovely stretch in the back of the hip. And come up. You can actually squeeze your glutes to come up. And then other leg in front. And we're going to come forward onto the block or onto the floor or a couple of hands on the floor. And feel the stretch on the other side. And the sensations may be quite different on the two sides. We are two-sided beings, and that's just fine. And 
then squeeze the glutes, bring yourself up. Nice easy breath. And we're going to bring ourselves up into Tadasana, and that means the mountain pose. So I want you to think about the most beautiful mountain you can ever remember seeing. And I want you to just get yourself into the sense of what it would be like to be that grounded and that powerful and that strong, because indeed you are. In Tadasana, you've got a beautiful Tadasana stance there with your feet right at hip width apart. Imagine roots from your feet going into the earth. And then feel energy coming up your spine and feel a beautiful column of light going up into the heavens. So it's as if your posture is insured with your roots and your light. And then just let your posture be so that everything is just where it's supposed to be. How do your hips feel? Are your knees not locked? Beautiful, beautiful Tadasana stance. So this is one of those anchor poses from which we come into other yoga asanas, and that means easy, relaxed position, so we never want it to be too difficult, just a little more challenging as we go along. So we're gonna begin with Surya Namaskar, salutation to the sun. Bring your hands together in prayer position, and I think you're gonna to need to turn your mat around so that you're always protecting your knees and everything. Okay, hands in prayer position. Now we're gonna inhale up. You can clasp your thumbs. When your arms get in line with your ears, bend back. And now we're gonna exhale, coming forward with a flat back. And just pause for a second at flat back, see what that feels like and then continue the exhalation as you round down and you place your hands beside your feet on your mat. And now we're gonna bring the left foot back into a low lunge. And then we're gonna come up. This is a variation on the classic sun salutation. This is monkey pose. And you can actually get a little bit fancy. Bring your hands together, point your two pointer fingers up. That's temple pose. So you're a monkey in a temple, which uh, in India, we saw monkeys in temples. So nice memory. Okay, come back, hands by that foot. And now bring the other foot back and we're gonna come back into a plank. With a plank, you wanna be very strong, very straight, Know that your abs are the big workers here. We're gonna hold this and feel that your head is in line, beautiful, with your cervicals. Very straight, very strong. And now we're coming into Chaturanga. This is knees, chest, and chin. Your knees come down, your chest comes down, your elbows bend, they're in close to your ribs. And knees, chest, and chin are on your mat. Then lower your hips, straighten your feet out so the tops of your feet are on the floor, and bring yourself up into a baby cobra. So your arms are going to be bent. There's going to be very little, if any, weight on the hands. Baby Bhujangasana, baby cobra. And now push yourself up into a downward facing dog. Now some teachers insist that you try to get your heels on the mat. And that's certainly something that you can do. But just for a moment here, try not to worry about getting your heels on the mat and focus instead on getting your tailbone to really point toward the ceiling. Imagine that somebody is behind you with a yoga strap and they're lifting you up so that your tailbone is really pointing toward the ceiling. And just see what a different downward dog experience 
That might be. And release and bring that left foot once again in front of your hands. Low lunge. Right knee is on the floor. Okay. And hold, look forward. And your foot can be turned down onto the mat or your toes can be turned under, whatever gives you better balance. And we're going to come up once again into our very spiritual monkey with his temple hands. Relax the shoulders. And come forward, hands by that foot, and then bring the right foot up to meet the left, and just hang. You can even clasp your arms, kind of like a perturbed librarian. This is uh, Uttanasana, forward bend, and let your head be very relaxed so you can shake it yes, you can shake it no. And then let your arms relax. And using your glutes, using your abs, we're going to squeeze that lower body and bring yourself up, arms alongside the ears. You can clasp your thumbs and bend back. And then we're going to come back where we started into that prayer position. Take a nice inhale. And when you exhale, Open your feet, shoulder width, and you're back in Tadasana. So breathe and feel yourself energized. The circulation is going. Now just in this interim place, we're going to do a little work with the Tadasana. Something very simple. First, you want to feel yourself rooted into the ground, that column of light into the heavens. Your posture is just lovely. And then we're going to turn the hands so that the palms face out. That's just going to give us a little bit more openness. We come out of the room, out of the womb, as people destined to be upright. And then we start carrying school books and babies and everything that we just hug and we hunch over computers and desks. And so we tend to kind of round as time passes. And we want to be open open in our chests and shoulders, open to our lives. Now release the hands, let your arms relax beside you, but keep that beautiful sense of openness in your Tadasana. And now we're going to do another sun salutation. We're going to start with the right leg this time when we go back. And this one we're going to do a little bit more quickly. So hands together in prayer position. Reach your arms out, clasping the thumbs, inhale, and bend backwards, and on your exhale, come forward, back flat, and then round as you bring your fingers or your palms down to meet your feet. And you can bend your legs as much as you need, bend your knees, so that you can get your fingers or your palms on the floor. Reach that right leg back, low lunge, and we're going to stretch up into monkey, and give him his temple hands. And then we're going to exhale back down and out into our plank. And that is, I'm going to walk around and look at you, but that is an absolutely beautiful plank. Just, just beautiful. Your, your hips are in line, your head is in line. Really, really lovely. Okay. And now we're going to come down into that chaturanga, knees, chest, and chin, elbows in. And when the, the torso comes down, when the hips come down, and the feet flatten out, we're going to inhale. You can come into baby cobra as we did before, or if you want to work a little bit more on back bending, come into a fuller cobra so that your arms are straightening more. And you don't need to bring your head way up because that really compresses the cervical vertebrae. Your head can be looking kind of straight and it's your back that's doing the bend in the Bhujangasana. 
And now come down, uncurling, unfurling, just like that cobra would do. Forehead to the floor. And now we're gonna make a little extra move in our Surya Namaskar. We're gonna push up into a child's pose with extended arms. Balasana. So in child's pose, your knees can be together or they can be apart. It really depends on how you're feeling in this moment. Beautiful, beautiful stretch. It's a way to relax, a way to center yourself, and to get a lovely, lovely counter stretch. And now we're going to come up into downward facing dog and hold. And we're going to add a couple of variations to this as well. Because we're starting with the right leg this time, we're going to raise the right leg up into a down dog split. So the idea is that you want to feel at least that there is a lovely diagonal line from your heel to the palm of your hand. And you want your hips to be squared. So what we're trying to avoid is getting extra height by jacking that right hip up to the side. You want your hips to be squared and breathe in the posture. You can also do some kind of positive affirmation in any posture that you like. I am strong. I am acing this. I can accomplish whatever I set out to do. And now lower that leg and reconfigure your downward dog so you feel good in that. Now we talked before that we don't always need to be so concerned about getting our heels on the floor in downward dog but a lovely variation is to bend your right knee and bring your left knee down to the floor and get a lovely stretch in the back of that left gastroc muscle in your calf. And then very slowly change feet so the right foot is pressing into the mat. So you're even getting a stretch in your toes Yoga is amazing in that it doesn't leave out any body parts. And now come back into your downward dog. And we just talked about heels and toes. Now let's talk about hands and palms. I want you to feel that every part of your hand, every knuckle is pressing into your mat when you do your down dog or any of these uh, positions where your hand is on the mat. Okay, now we're going to bring that left foot between the hands and you're in your low lunge yet again. We'll come up into monkey. Give that monkey some temple hands. Feel a lovely stretch in the left thigh. And back down, hands by that right foot. Left foot meets the right, hang over, Uttanasana, forward fold, tighten in the backs of the buttocks, tighten in your legs, squeeze yourself up. All this lower tightening isn't that important for some people, but for people who tend to be, um, get dizzy when they come up, it's good. So tighten everything, stretch your arms out, Clasp your thumbs and come up, hands up overhead, slight back bend, beautiful, beautiful, lovely. And back into prayer position, Tadasana, mountain pose. Beautiful, beautiful. Now we're gonna do some balancing. So one of my favorite balancing moves is called Natarajasana, which is the king Dancer pose. Now you have a nice sticky mat, so you can probably do yours just on your mat. 
I like to come off of that big mat to have a little more support on the floor. So to do your King Dancer Natta Rajasana, we're gonna put the weight into the left leg and then just bring the foot up slightly and get a sense of, okay, I'm standing on my right leg. And now, okay, we're gonna come forward, bring that right arm up, take hold of the left leg and bend and find a spot on the wall. I think if you did do ballet, you know how to find that spot and hold. And it's always so good in balancing postures to just be so nice to yourself. Because some days we have better balance than others, and some legs have better balance than others. King Dancer, and bring that down. Utterly beautiful, and I can already tell that before long, you'll be doing the full pose, which has both hands coming behind. Now, I'm gonna tell you that I already know that I do not balance well on my left leg. So I'm gonna come here and get a little bit of extra help if I need it. And we're gonna come into King Dancer on that side. So bring your weight into your left foot. And then we're going to bring that right leg back and come forward. And take hold of your right leg behind you. Beautiful. With that spot in the wall, at least we're not spinning. And raise your right, your left arm up, because we're dancing for the king, you know. And hold and breathe. At the center of peace I stand. Nothing can harm me here. Release. And that leg comes down. You're back in Tadasana. That quotation comes from Swami Paramahansa Yogananda. And it stayed with me. I read it when I was 18 years old. At the center of peace I stand. Nothing can harm me here. It's beautiful to bring to mind when you're having any kind of agitation or when you're trying to be very balanced. So let's come back down. Onto our mats. And let's just do a mini savasana. And to do this, we're going to lie down. You want your feet to be shoulder distance apart. And you want your hands at your sides at whatever amount of space between your sides and your hands makes you feel good. Now, savasana translates as corpse pose. And in yoga, we're actually told, this is practice. We want to live well, and we want to die well. And so by coming into this deep relaxation, which we'll do more at the end when we're in our savasana posture, but doing the moves of yoga nidra or yogic sleep, you really learn to let go. So just pay attention to where there might be some points of tension. How about your hips? How about your shoulders? How about your calves? Just give yourself permission to relax so much that your head turns to the side. And if you don't like the idea of thinking of this as corpse pose, you can think of it as sponge pose. Some people also call it chetan asana, which I believe translates as the pose of the student, the pose of that person who is studying the laws of life. And now just re reach your hands up overhead, point your toes, nice stretch, and relax. And now point your toes toward the ceiling and your heels down and your hands are flat so you kind of have Flat feet and flat palms, stretch, stretch, stretch. And then we're going to come up seated just by rolling on the spine. Be careful because your mat is very thin, so you don't want to hurt your back. And just come back up into a seated cross-leg position. 
And now we are going to bring ourselves onto the front line in the front, which is called Adasana. And I always remember that one because it's odd in yoga to lie on our front, uh, but we're gonna do that. Turn your face to one side. And we started a little bit of back bending in our baby cobra in the sun salutation and also in the king dancer pose. And we're gonna do two more back bendy moves and then we will move into forward bends. So for this one, you can place either your chin, and I'm not talking the bottom of your chin here, but the front part of your chin on your mat, or you could actually have your forehead there too, if that feels better on your neck. And we are going to do the locust pose, or salabhasana. We're gonna start with Ardha salabhasana, which is the half locust pose. And to do this, it's a little bit awkward. You need to bring your hands underneath your body so that one palm is on top of the other and the other palm is pressing onto the pubic bone. And now, if you didn't have your hands there, you could feel that your pelvic bones were pressing into your mat. So with those bones, at least thinking about pressing them into the mat, even though that's not quite possible, we're gonna lift the left leg. Just lift it up and hold. Now what Salabhasana does is give you a lot of strengthening in the lower body. But the other thing that it does is work on some of those organs that are in the lower body. So we're taught in yoga that salabhasana tonifies the kidneys, the elimination and the reproductive organs. And that's part of the magic of yoga, that in addition to working on muscles and using joints, it um, works on the glands and the organs as well. Now lower that left leg. And now we're going to bring up the right leg and hold. And let me know if anything doesn't feel good. Because yoga is always supposed to be good, even when it's a little bit of a stretch. And lower that leg. Take a little bit of an easy breath, as much as you can do in this position. And now we're gonna come into the full posture, which means that we're going to be lifting both legs. So inhale, and on the exhale, we're gonna raise both legs up, and do your best to keep your knees straight, and you'll really wanna tighten the glutes. This is a major glute workout in your locust pose. So hold. Maybe you want to bring to mind that affirmation about how you just ace all these things. And hold. Straighten the legs. I am strong. I am up for this. I am a powerful woman. And then slowly lower the legs. Beautiful. Bring the hands out and either have your arms around your head, I call that kindergarten pose, that's not official, or uh, have your arms at your sides. Turn your cheek to the other side and breathe. And now for our final backward bending of the class, we're gonna bring the forehead to the mat, and we're gonna bend both legs and take hold of the feet. This is the beginning of bow pose, Danyarasana. And this may be all you wanna do. If you're getting a nice stretch in the quadriceps, feels really good, this could be fine. But if you want to do a bit more, we're going to very slowly bring the forehead up from the mat, look forward, press your feet back into your palms, 
so that your chest is lifted. And then if you want to go into the full expression, bring your knees up off the mat. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Hold and breathe. And lower the knees first, and then the head. And push yourself back into Balasana, pose of the child. And you can always play with this one, with you, whether you have wide knees or close together knees, whether you have extended arms. I like to do it with my knees wide and my arms extended, or with my knees together and my arms at my sides. And you'll sometimes hear that one called folded leaf. But either way, it takes a lot of pressure off the back. And now very gently bring yourself up and back around into seated in a lovely L shape. And we call this staff pose, dandasana. And you can actually bring your arms up in line with your ears and just feel your fingers being lifted up and feel your spine really straightening. Beautiful, beautiful posture. And now we're gonna lower the arms. We're gonna take hold of the right knee, bend it, bring it up either in line with the left knee or more like mid-thigh, whatever feels good to you. Then we're going to bring that knee out. And again, if you had it up here, you might want to put something underneath that doesn't apply to you. And we're going to come into our head to knee pose, Jani Shirshasana. So inhale up, arms and ears in line, and on a beautiful exhale, come forward and reach down taking hold well I usually say of your your calves your ankles or your feet but you obviously went right for the feet <laughs> you get a little bit of extra pizzazz in this one when you can hold the bottom of your foot or is kind of classically done in yoga holding the big toe because that gives you a little more of that stretch in the back of the thigh but every yoga posture performed with grace and respect for oneself and for the tradition is always done just right, even if a little tweak might make it more comfortable. So this time we're going to breathe in as we reach out beyond that toe and tighten the glutes to bring yourself up. And then we're going to change and bring the left foot up and bring that left knee down, inhale, arms float up, and then on the exhale, float down and take hold of that bottom part of your foot. Now your head can either be resting on your knee if you're that flexible, or you can just hold it in a comfortable position that isn't doing anything untoward to your neck. There's always the right way and a wrong way, and then there's one's own personal way. And sometimes uh, that's somewhere in the middle, always closer to right. We never want to do anything wrong. We never want to hurt ourselves. But sometimes you just need to customize a little bit to make something work for your body. So reach those arms out beyond the foot, bring yourself up, your arms come down, floating up. We're coming now into Paschimottanasana, full forward bend. So we're gonna, on an exhale, come forward, flat back, and then round. And you can take hold of your big toes, you can take hold around your feet, whatever works and relax into the posture. You can't do deep breathing in a forward bend, but you can do conscious breathing. And just know that with every inhale, you're filling your body not only with the oxygen that it needs, 
but also with prana, which is a vital life force. We think about prana in terms of a carrot. If you have a nice fresh carrot and it has green tops on it and you take it out in the yard and plant it, you're gonna get yourself some carrots. Now, if you cook that carrot, <laughs> it's gonna be good to eat. Some of that uh, beta carotene is actually going to be more assimilable by the body in the cooked carrot than in the raw one. And yet, if you planted the cooked carrot, you would just get compost, no fresh carrots, because that life force energy, the yogis would say, that prana is gone. Reach out beyond the foot, tighten the glutes, engage the abs, bring yourself up. Beautiful, beautiful hands behind you. Feet separate just a bit and look up. This is not a real yoga posture, but some modern yogis call it beach pose. <laughs> if you think about those pictures of people in the benighted days when we didn't know that lying out in the sun was not a great thing to do. Okay, and now we're going to come into a signature yogic move, and that is um, the shoulder stand, the uh, Sarvangasana. So if you'd like the softer mat, why don't we just trade, okay? Because I'm always very, uh, you can just- I'm like, probably okay on that one. You think that's okay? Yeah. It's gonna be right on your neck yeah, here. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Because I've been around yoga so long, I don't necessarily trust these little mats. We didn't <laughs> used to have these little mats. So lie on your back, okay? And what we're gonna do, you've seen a shoulder stand, so you know what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. So bend your knees and bring them up, and then lift yourself up perfectly. Put your hands here at the small of your back, okay? And straighten your legs. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, I'm just gonna adjust a tiny, there you go. Perfect. Okay, and you can actually relax your dancer feet. Ah, second <laughs> nature. <laughs> yes. Okay, now we're gonna hold this. You can close your eyes. Now, if this bothers your neck at all, if it bothers your collarbone, I'm gonna tell you how to come down before it's time to come down. Okay. Just so you know how to do it if you need to do it sooner. You're just going to be bending your knees just the way we came, and then slowly letting yourself roll down until your hips come to the mat. Now I'm going to just adjust a tiny bit here again. Okay. Now, we're going to come into another pose and only do this if you know it's going to be okay for your body. This is the plow pose. This means you're going to bring your feet down over your body. You okay with this? Uh -huh. Okay. There you go. And breathe. Beautiful. And what happens in these um, inversion postures? People will sometimes say, well, your blood flow reverses. No, it doesn't. Your blood flow always goes the way it's supposed to go. But it does root blood to places where it needs to be. Come on up. So when you're in the full shoulder stand with your chin pressed into your, your throat area, your neck, you are stimulating your thyroid gland. Okay, let's come down, bend your knees, and come down until your hips reach your mat. And you can keep your legs bent there if you like. Take a nice breath, okay? And we're gonna do the classic follow-up to the shoulder stand, Matsi Andrasana, or fish pose. Now, I like to do this with a little bit of a, uh, of a prop. So we're gonna use a blanket. In fish pose, I'll show you first, and then you can come into it. We're gonna put the prop underneath your back right about here. And then we're going to come up onto the elbows and bring the top of your head or something close to the top of your head down onto your mat so you're looking up at the sky. And then to come out of it, 
you raise your head, remove your prop, and come back down into your relaxation pose, Savasana. You good with that? Uh -huh. Okay. So, the prop is not absolutely required, but uh, since it's your first time, we're going to do it. And if you think next time you'll be better without it, then that is your prerogative. Okay. Okay, let's see. We're going to be bending. I think that should be fine. Okay. Now, you want to... You can either have your legs out the way they are now or with the knees bent. I like it with the knees bent. I think that takes some pressure off the mat. Then we're going to come up onto the elbows and bring your hands around to support your low back just the way you had them in the shoulder stand. Mm -hmm. And then bring your head, top of your head, down onto the mat. And this is a beautiful chest opener. Right where are my elbows go? Right where <laughs> they are, wherever they're comfortable. In there. Is that going to work? Yeah. Okay. Hold and breathe. Beautiful. Lovely, lovely. And bring your, your body down. Look that way. <laughs> I'm sorry, I did something backwards for you. Relax. Okay. I am so used to only demonstrating when I teach, that when I'm trying to teach without demonstrating, uh, imperfections come out, and that was one of them. That's okay. So what we want to do is come from the head on the mat to looking forward, and then bringing the body down. Okay. My apologies. That's okay. You feeling okay? Uh-huh. Very good. All right. Take a nice minute there in your savasana. In the traditional Hatha philosophy, it's believed that relaxation in between each posture lets the posture settle into the body and the various benefits are easier to get. So we're just going to finish with a hip stretch and then we'll do some breathing and then you'll get to do your yogic sleep and we will finish right on time. So we're going to do a modified pigeon pose. It's sometimes called the four points pose. So, I know that you and I like pigeons a lot, so we're going to lie down on our backs. Should I get rid of my towel? Get rid of your towel. Okay. And we're just going to cross that left ankle over the right knee, and we're going to reach behind the right thigh. You may need to raise your head up to do this, but then put your head back down on your mat. So what we're aiming for here is a lovely stretch in the back of the left hip. So in our warm-up, we did a little bit of a stretch, and this is even more. This is modified pigeon or a modified kapotasana. I think it looks a little bit more like its other name, figure four. the hands, lower that leg, hands come out to the side, both feet on the mat, inhale, and as you exhale, cross the right ankle over the left knee, reach behind the left thigh and bring that leg up, and feel the stretch in the right hip. Now to get more of a stretch or to get a different kind of stretch, you might want to bend that left knee a little bit more and bring your right foot a little bit more toward the hip. Or you might want to straighten the leg, always very slowly with these variations, just to see if it changes anything for you. The other thing that you can do if you feel that you're not getting much of a stretch here is bring that bent 
left knee a little bit closer to your body so that you're getting more of a stretch in the right hip. And if it's feeling a little too stretchy, like, wow, this is a stretch, you can either come out of the posture or as you inhale, take the breath to that hip like a warm healing massage. And then release and bring that Savasana position back. You're lying on your back and you want to completely, entirely, utterly relax. We're going to come into the yogic sleep, yoga nidra. And the more you do this, the more you can do it on demand. And sometimes you just really need a little bit of yogic sleep it's a way to get away from it all by getting into what is really it all and <laughs> getting into that beautiful essence that you carry in your heart that we talked about earlier. So we're going to start by really tightening the feet and the legs and the hips and the buttocks and the abdomen. The whole lower body is really, really tight and we're going to let go of it. Let it go. Let it go. And now we're going to squeeze the hands together and make fists. We're going to tighten the forearms and the upper arms. We're going to squeeze the shoulders up to the ears. And relax. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. And now we're going to just squeeze the chest, which might be more of an imagined squeeze, and squeeze those shoulders up again and your neck and your face. Just bring your face into a little root shape and let it go. Your head might turn to one side and then just feel a beautiful wave of relaxation. It's lapping up over your feet and your calves and your thighs. It's all the way up to your waist. It's as if you're lying on a beautiful beach and the waves are just with you. But these are waves of relaxation and they're going to come up your hands and your forearms, your upper arms and your shoulders. They're going to come up over your chest and over your back and you're going to feel beautifully, beautifully relaxed. And now we're going to put on a magical breathing apparatus so that wave of relaxation can come up all the way over your head and you can still breathe just beautifully. Beautiful breathing and beautiful relaxation. Bring your attention to the face and think about relaxing between the eyes, around the eyes. All those muscles where people inject the Botox, just let that relax naturally. And feel relaxation around your cheeks and your jaw. Feel even that your scalp is relaxing, that your ears are relaxing, that your tongue inside your mouth is relaxed. So you can float away into your own personal state of peace and restoration. I'll watch the time.
just as we felt the waves of relaxation coming up from our feet and into our legs and thighs, we're going to feel a wave of energy, not frenetic energy, not anxious energy, but beautiful, sustained, measured energy coming up into the feet and the calves and the thighs so that the whole lower body is feeling like, I want to get going. So you want to move your feet a little bit, move your toes, a few ankle circles. You might even want to bend your knees and bring them over to the right and over to the left. And then you're feeling that wave of relaxation as you bring your bent knees back to center and stretch your legs out again. The energy is coming up into your fingertips and you start to move your fingers and you start to circle your hands and you bend your elbows and you bring your arms up overhead. Give yourself a nice stretch and then you're feeling that wave of beautiful, perfect, measured energy coming up from your tailbone along your spine and coming from all the nerves radiating through the spine to energize your entire body and your entire being. And now roll over onto your left side with your knees bent and push ourselves up into a seated position. And we're gonna finish with a beautiful, beautiful balancing breathing practice, which is alternate nostril breathing. We're gonna have this thumb here to close off the right nostril. These two fingers, like the peace sign fingers, can rest here on your third eye. And then we have these fingers for shutting off this nostril. So this is Nadi Shodhana, alternate nostril breathing. We're gonna begin with a ninth breath through both nostrils. Exhale. And now close off the right nostril and inhale through the left on a count of four. One, two, three, four. Then block off the left nostril, open the right. Exhale, one, two, three, four. And then inhale, one, two, three, four. Close off that right nostril, open the left, and exhale. One, two, three, four. Now inhale through the left. One, two, three, four. Hold, open, exhale. One, two, three, four. And inhale. One, two. Exhale through the other nostril, close off the right, and exhale left. One, two, three, four. Bring that hand down, breathe normally. I promised you a bigger spinal twist, and we're not going to be able to do that in the time available, so I hope you will be back for next class, and we'll do that for sure. Now we're going to close with a mantra that brings to mind something we mentioned earlier, and that is the sanctity of all life. Loka samasta sukino bhavantu. May all life be free from suffering. May all life know peace and joy. May the thoughts, words, actions, and choices of my day be a part of that peace and that joy for all. Namaste. Thanks so much for being here. Do you have any questions? I don't think so. Okay, well it's wonderful. Well, you know where to find me and I hope that you'll want to come back. Okay, thank Blessings you. Have a new day. Bye.